um, uh, in that, in that offering. And it's, it's a worthy cause and souls will be saved. Um, and so your investment will be worth it. Um, so we'll be taking up that offering uh, tomorrow night. Um, the other thing, and we mentioned this yesterday, is our faith promise plan. If, if you uh, have one of these, it, it was in your, in your booklet, um, you will notice that it's perforated. There's a perforated portion at the very bottom. That's, that's convenient. for a, Listen, we do whatever we can to make it easy. Um, and so tomorrow night when we take up the offering, we would just ask that, that you put that in, whatever part you're going to have in that. Uh, be praying about that. Jeff mentioned it last night, that if you are a faithful contributor to our, our faith promise plan, uh, our missions giving, well, thank you for that. And just ask the Lord uh, how, how he would have you increase that and if he would. And, and if you haven't contributed to that, but you're a regular tither and giver to our, our regular offering, general offering, um, man, ask the Lord your part in missions uh, from a giving standpoint. And, and if, if you don't do either, ask yourself how you can help the, just the, the general funding of this church and the general budget of this church and your part uh, in giving of that. But if you could let us know, this is how we plan our missions budget. And so you can just write down the, the top portions for you so you can remember, but you can uh, tear off the bottom portion, put in, in what, what your contribution is going to be, and that helps us plan uh, missions budget for the year. And speaking of that, one of the things we were able to do uh, this week, we, we're actually able to do it today, is we sent uh, we, the ladies out for a special, a special day. So we have the missionary spotlight, we have uh, Suzanne and Laura, and, and we have uh, Kale and Brooke, and so Laura and Brooke and, and Erla and some of the ladies were able to go have a day um, on us, on you. Because of your faithful support to our missions, we were able to treat them. And listen, um, you know, you always see the men, you're going to see Suzanne up here in a little bit, and he's going to be preaching to you, but, you know, we all, we all know the real heroes um, uh, of these works. And, and the ladies obviously um, have such an important role in, in our lives as pastors and missionaries and leaders, um, and they have such an important role in the ministry. Um, and so we're honored to be able to, to give them a little bit of, uh, of, of, just give them a fun day today. Um, but thank you for your support. It, it funds those sorts of things. So it's, it's a worthwhile endeavor. So be praying about um, uh, your part uh, in all of that. Um, but like I said, tonight is a special night. So we started to hear about Hungary last night, and we're going to hear more about Hungary when Kale preaches tomorrow night. Uh, but tonight, we're going to hear about a work that is special to this church because it's, it's special to our pastor. And, you know, Paul said in, in Romans 15 20 that he, he strived to preach the gospel for Christ was not named. And when, when Jeff went to Albania in the early 90s, that was certainly the case, uh, coming out of communism, and, and Christ wasn't named. And what you're going to hear tonight is the fruit of that ministry and how Christ's name has been exalted and is still being exalted. So, Jeff, why don't you come on up? You can introduce uh, our speaker tonight and get us going. So, to, that, that's really up there. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a special opportunity for all of us, and, and I'm going to introduce to you, Cezanne, in just a second, but let me just say this, because we're talking about a theme, really. We're, we're really excited this year because we believe that God has our entire church at a very important, pivotal turning point where the whole church starts seeing things differently because our own people that have been grown up and trained are going to be sent out to do new things in new places, and well, we're going to feel that in a more personal way than probably ever before, and we're going to want to go with them in all the different ways that we can go with them. Well, back in the 90s, as we were developing that ministry and people were being saved, Cezanne was among them and grew up in our ministry. And, well, I started the church in Tirana, the capital city, and in 1998, we ordained three men. For the first time, we ordained three men as deacons. And one of them was Sazan, and one of them was a man named Tao Lunt, who's the pastor of the church that I started in Tirana, the larger church. And one of them's named Arion, and he happens to be my wife's brother, and three very faithful men that were deacons. And then coming into the 2000s, and he'll tell the story, but Sazan was the 
first man that was literally ordained to be sent out to start a new work in a new place. So we're kind of celebrating that. We, I was that person for my church in Decatur, Alabama, and in a sense, Kale's that person, at least in our generation here and now, and Cezanne was that person in his day and time and what he did, and, and God's really done some amazing things in his life. And, and the beauty of ministry, especially, you know, if, if you're closer to my age, um, the beauty of doing ministry faithfully over the generations is you may lead people to the Lord, you may disciple them as your children in the Lord, but they grow up and mature, and they're no longer like your children. They're your peers. They're, they're your brothers in, in arms, and, and, and that's, what, that's what Cezanne is. He's my friend. Uh, he's a dear friend, and, and some of my best friends in the world live over there, and, and he's just one of them. And, and I'm so, so very excited. Uh, he visited here 12 years ago, but uh, man, I'm so excited to have him back. We're going to do, he's going to show you some slides and some pictures and tell you about the ministry. Then we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back and we're going to preach the word. So we're very excited. Let's welcome Pastor Sazan. Zani, hi there. Pari duat të them uh, për mua është një ndërë edhe një kënajësi që janë për para jush. Uh, the first thing I want to say is that I think Jeff's an awesome guy. <laughs> no, he didn't. I'm fine to say it. Burashaka. Burashaka. He said it's a privilege and an honor to be here in front of you. A i mund të thot qëfar të doj për gruajme do ma thot më vonë. He said he can say whatever he wants but my wife speaks English and she knows what he says. <laughs> It's the second time that I get to be with you. The first time I was here was 12 years ago, right at the time as I was starting our ministry in Duras. And I know that you've prayed for me and there's a lot of things that we have together in our ministries and for all of those things I just want to say thank you. Do të ndaj disa gjëra që kanë të bëjnë me gjithë këto vite që ne kemi qenë në Durrës është një shërbim hiri uh, nga Perëndia, ashtu ti që është edhe shpëtimi yn, një shpëtim hiri nga Perëndia. There's a lot of things I want to share with you that have happened in our ministry in Durrës and the one thing I want you to understand that it's just a ministry as a result of the grace of God working in our midst. Ne shkuam në Durrës uh, në vitin 2004 uh, të dërguar nga kisha biblike Baptiste Tiranës. We went to Duras in the year 2004, sent from the Tirana Bible Baptist Church. God has given us two daughters, Adela and Deborah. For those of you that might not know where Albania is, there it is. It's in the southeastern portion of Europe. Whereas Duras is on the western coast on the Adriatic Sea. Those are our two girls, Adela and Deborah. Adela is 17, she's on the left, and Deborah is 15. When we went to Duras, we um, were faced with different kind of situations. Uh, Duras is a fairly large city, certainly compared to a town like New Philadelphia. We have about 250,000 people. But there's less than 1% of them that are born again. When we went there, uh, as a result of having the country having about 45 years of communism, uh, the main thing that we faced in Duras were people that were atheists. Uh, when we went there, there was also four official religions recognized the government that had really uh, gotten their life back again after the fall of communism. And we had to learn how to present ourselves in the gospel differently which e with each different religious group uh, to, to be an effective witness. Two of the groups actually are different sects of Islam whereas one, the other one is Catholic and the other one is Orthodox. 
në durës gjetëm rreth 4 kisha ungjillore që po shërbenin perëndisë aty. When we went there we, there was only four evangelical Christian churches in the city when we got there. Ne shkuam duke besuar perëndisë dhe që të ndërtonim jo mbi themelin në një tjetër, por që perëndia do të do të na jepte njerëz edhe ai do të lindë një kish për lavdinë e When we went to Duras, we didn't want to build on another man's foundation, but we wanted to start our own church with people that we've won to Christ for the glory of God. Of course, it's natural that nobody can be saved without hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ, so the first thing we did was begin to evangelize. And the very first people that got saved, we just started to gather them together in our home. Ndërsa në 2004, ndërkoj që ne u vendosëm në durës, katë që katë më rekluash me midis nesh, jush dhe tiranës. So in 2004, when we finally moved to Duras, there are some amazing things that happened between our church and your church and the church in Tirana. Ishim nëndë veta, katër ishin nga Tirana, unë me laurën dhe tre nga shtetet e bashkuara, ndërkoj që dy ishin nga kisha juaj. So we, we developed a team of people to work together. There were four people that came from Tirana. There were three that came from America. Two of them came from this church, and that was Laura and myself that were working together. So for nine months, we had a good time of planting the seed of the Word of God. So we were able to lay a solid foundation on which the church, which is the Duras Bible Church, could be raised. As the Bible teaches us, people that have been born again have to follow the first step of obedience, and that's baptism. So all the people that got saved, they were submissive to the command of God for baptism? So in a very natural way, after that, we began to spend time with them one-on-one -on -one to begin to teach them the Word of God and to begin to disciple them in the foundation of the faith. Pasi mbaronin si zë dishepullizimi një nga një, ne kemi mbledhë në grupe, duke umësuar atyre dishepullizimi në dy në klasa të ndryshme, si për shëmbull të mësojnë vetë të studiojnë fjallën e përëndis. After they finished the system of discipleship, which is one-on-one, -on -one, we began to gather them together into classes and took them to the second level of discipleship, where, they, where we taught them uh, more serious things like how to study the Bible. Por në qovë se vetëm uh, bëjmë këtë gjë, uh, edhe nuk shërbëjmë, atëherë kemi humbu fokusin, So, but we know that if all they do is come and learn facts and they don't begin to serve, that they're actually <coughs> going to start to slide backwards in their faith. So we began to get them to be all involved in ministry. The first thing that we started was the ministry with children, which is actually one of the easiest ministries because children are very open to the gospel. Duke organizuar kampet të ndryshme, duke organizuar takimet të ndryshme në mënyrë që të mund të rishni fëmijët dhe më pas të ndanim atyre unë gjithë. So we did camps and we did different activities so that we could uh, draw and invite other kids to come and eventually, in a natural way, be able to eventually share the gospel with them. Ndërkoj që kisha rritet, ajo që ndodhë është që përëndia për në hapë të mundësit të reja shërbimi edhe filluam të shërbim më pas edhe me, me të rinjtë. So as the, as the church began to grow, uh, the Lord gave us more opportunities to reach out to more people and we began to have contacts and reach out to more youth. We did the same type strategy with the teenagers as well. We had camps and activities in order to develop relationships. Por më shumë se kaq, ata fillojnë që të marim pjesë vetë në shërbimin e e të rinjve, duke marë pjesë në drama, skeqe ose në këngë të veçanta. And similarly, but because they're, they're older, when they got saved, they began to take part in ministry as well, and different things like uh, uh, dramas and skits that we do in church and music and things like that. Êshtë e bukur që të mund të shofë është tek njerëzit gëzimin e shpëtimit, por gjithashtu është e bukur ku shikon që për shkak të jetës e re, ata dhe dashurisë për përëndin, ata, ata i shërbejnë përëndis. It's a great thing to be able to see the joy of the Lord on their faces when they get saved, but it's even a greater thing when you see that they love the Lord enough to actually get involved and begin to serve in various ministries. 
Shërbimi uh, i më bonëshëm që lindi në durës ishte shërbimi studentve. The next ministry that was developed was a ministry to students they're referring specifically to college students. Uh, është një, një shërbim i efektshëm, kemi disa vjetë që, që po e bëjmë tani edhe përëndia na, na ka bekuar me frute. Uh, this is a very effective ministry. We have several years that we've been work, working this ministry and the Lord has blessed us with much fruit. Jam dy gjëra kryesore që, që bëjmë me studentët, nga njëra anë është gjëra të zbavitse dhe nga nga tjetër është kurset e anglishtes. There's two main things that we do to reach out to the students. One of them has to do with just activities that are fun, and the other one is courses to learn the English language. And these activities are things that draw in unsaved students so that we can share the gospel with them. In 1992, when the country first opened, most all the people in Albania were much more open to the gospel, but by the time we went to Duras, it wasn't necessarily the case. Sepse ajo që kanë dodur është fetë kanë lulzuar edhe e, pak e nga pak a, ato i kanë shtyrë njerëzit që të besojnë në fenë tyre. So for those 10 years, by the time we went to Duras, the other four religions had begun to grow and, and, and they were getting the mindsets of a lot of the people and a lot of the people who had those previous religious traditions, they tended to just stick to their religious tradition and not listen to the gospel. Kështu kur ne organizojmë kurset e anglishtes, ajo që ndodhë është nuk ndajmë me njëherë unë gjilin, por e ndajmë kursin në dy pjesë ose në dy seansa. So that's when we started the English lessons. We started the English lessons not even sharing the gospel for many of the first weeks. We divided the lessons actually into two separate sections. Sala ku ne bëjmë takimet ka vargje nga Biblia në mur, edhe është e dukshme që nuk është një sallë normale. The hall that we use for our church where we share the English lessons, well, we have Bible verses posted on the wall, and even though we didn't share the gospel early on, it was pretty obvious that it wasn't just a normal classroom. So, so at the beginning, when, people, when these students would come to learn English and they would see the Bible verses on the wall, they began to wonder, what are these guys? There's got to be a hook. What is this all about? And so the fact that we didn't share the gospel, just tried to win their faith over, um, that actually helped. Por duke komunikuar me ta, duke ofruar dashuri, duke mosu folu për përndin në pesi avët e para, ata fillojnë që të ndihen më rehat me ne. So they were a little nervous about it at the, at the front end, but, but just spending time talking with them, just teaching the lessons and not talking about the Lord at the beginning, as strange as that may sound, actually caused them to just relax a little and trust us. Then we just took the opportunity to share our personal testimony about the things the Lord has done in our lives and how he's changed our lives. Dhe në një ditë të fundit, ku ne japim diplomat për uh, kursin e anglishtes, atë ditë në ndajmë unë gjithin. And so on the final day when we would give them their diploma for finishing the course in English, that was the day that we ultimately shared clearly the gospel. Dhe kjo ka rezultuar e frutë shme si shtash edhe njerës janë rilin dhe për me spi shërbimi. And this has actually been fruitful, like I said before, because a lot of people were saved as a result of that effort. Kjo e fundit është foto që është bërë uh, para njave. So this last picture that was taken was only taken about a week ago. So the ministry that we've started to the women in the community is a, is a fairly new, effective ministry that, that we have done. This ministry meets in the homes of different ladies. They'll meet in one lady's home and the next time in a different one's home. It's been a wonderful thing that God's done in our midst because we have mature ladies that have been saved and actually in Albania that's not that normal of a thing in this first generation. Nuk e pa të prindë të shpëtuar, por në gjysmën e dytë, përëndia ka thyrë zemrat të tyre, shpërgjigjullutjeve dhe, dhe na ka dhenë 
So about the first 15 years of ministry in Albania, most of the people that were saved were younger, and we all prayed for our parents to be saved, but really none of them got saved. But going on past that first 15 years, after the prayer and effort of witnessing to them, eventually we started seeing our parents and our mothers in this case come to know the Lord. So they've been saved, they're, they take part in our church, they serve in different ministries, they invite their lady friends to come and they're involved in different things we do. The men's ministry that we've started is primarily focused just on a time of prayer together. Uh, since the Lord has recently given us many new couples in our church, So what we're doing is we're taking these new couples, newlyweds, uh, and bringing them into our homes. So we take them into our homes and we just begin to share with them what life is like as a newlywed and how God can work in their lives as they develop their new relationship together with each other but with the Lord. Three years ago, we began a ministry towards the poorer families of our community. So primarily in the winter months, what we would do is we had about 20 families that we would go and we would get food from a food bank and we would deliver food to their homes. And just letting them know that Jesus loves them and sharing our testimony on how he changed our lives. So the, the last thing that we've developed is the thing that we've developed together with, with your help, and that is um, the feeding center for the children. So we started this at the beginning of the year. We've got about four months, actually in December, four months that we've been doing this, and right now there are about 20 children that we're feeding. So these are families that truly are in need. A lot of the children are children of widows or they're children of divorced homes where there's only one income and they can barely get by. And I want to say thank you to all of you who are contributing to this because it's because of your generosity and sacrifice that we're able to do this ministry and able to help these people in this way. This is actually one of the ministries that the mothers that are in our church have really found their niche. They really enjoy going to the homes and just loving on these people and helping the children. So, I've had people ask me, well, what about the fathers? You talk about the mothers that have been saved, what about the fathers? I would just say that I would share that as a prayer request because, well, in our culture right now, we still have a hard time winning the fathers. They're a little bit more hard-headed and don't yet really listen. And we believe God and we're continuing to pray for them because just as we prayed for our mothers and, and finally the Lord changed their hearts, we believe that he's going to change the <coughs> men's hearts as well and eventually we'll see them get saved too. It, you, as you would see, our, our church in Duras is a church that's alive, it has life, we share our life together and it's a joy to do that. 
just enjoying our lives together when people get married, they have children, we have the different events of life, we share it together. Veç kësaj, ne mblidhemi në, në shpi, në, në dy skuadra të ndryshme, ku ne mund të rim më lirëshëm, edhe mund të ndajmë vështirësit, sfidat, por gjithashtu edhe të mund të ndajmë uh, kërkesa lutjesh për të lutu së bashku. We also have some family time where we divide up among ourselves, among our homes, and we can share more personal requests and things that are going on in our personal lives. Uh, mësojmë nga të vjetrit, atë qëfar, ata kanë kaluar në jetë, dhe gjithashtu të vjetrit mësojmë nga të rind, atë qëfar përëndia u ka mësuar nga fjala e ti. So, for example, as this photo would show, uh, the older can help the younger in all the areas of life that they've learned by experience, and in a lot of the cases in our church anyway, the, the younger can teach the older some of the things that they've learned from the Bible that the older haven't had a chance to learn yet. Në qofë se do të prezentoja në mënyrë të shkurëtër, vëndet nga kemi lëvizur dhe si përëndia ka punuar, është në këtë mënyrë. If I could show you just kind of a quick overview of where we came from and how God's worked over the years, let me just give you a picture of that. This is the very beginning when they started in their homes. Then this was the first place we rented, it was very small. And then we left that place and we rented another place which is a little bit bigger. Well, when we outgrew that place, then we went to another rented place, which was a little bit bigger. And so, you know, that, when we first moved in there, it seemed like it was really big. And when we moved in there, I just prayed that if we would ever leave this place, we wouldn't leave because the person who owned it and rented it to us just said it's time for you to move on, but that we would leave because we outgrew it. Actually, we stayed in this place for about 10 years. And so many, many years ago, I told our church that we needed to begin to pray for another location. And the people in the church would say to me, Pastor, we don't really have any need to pray for a new place. This, this room is plenty big. We can't fill it yet. We're fine right here. In fact, they were right. But the thing that I knew in my heart is that God was going to continue to work in our church and we would eventually need to go to a new place. So the very next year after we made that little conversation, the Lord doubled our attendance at church. And so, Amen. after the attendance doubled in a year, the, those members that said we had plenty of room said, hey, pastor, we need to find a new place. <laughs> <laughs> and so now this is the uh, new location for our church that we're in right now. And this is an entire another story of faith by itself. And I just want to thank you all for the ways that you have labored and prayed and sacrificed and given to dhe, help us be able to obtain this uh, place e that we have. And I know that God provided this for us just at the right time. This actually is a picture from our Christmas service this past Christmas, just a few months ago. We look beyond the boundaries of just our city. Uh, for the last seven years, we've been working throughout all of the villages that surround the city of Duras. There are actually 63 villages. And so they started at the very northern region of the Duras villages and working their way down to the south. One by one, they've gone through every single village in the surrounding area. And the Lord's used us to be able to share the good news of the gospel to people who before had never one time heard the gospel. So 
So God also used us working together with other churches in the area to take the gospel through youth camps to the neighboring country of Kosovo. Kosovo is a very important country in the country of Kosovo, and it is a very important country in the country of Kosovo. So Kosovo, as you can see, is on the northern border of Albania, and uh, they are actually Albanian people, Albanian-speaking people, so we found it easy to be able to go there and communicate with them. <coughs> Ndërkohë që u vendosëm në salë në re, përëndia Lëvizi Zemra Tona, që të mund të shqipnim lartë. While we were moving into our new church home, the Lord has given us a vision to realize we need to start looking even further beyond our borders. Edhe ajo që në bëri përëndia, që ne të mund të shikonim se qëfar Zotit do të bënde në të ardhmen në Libën e Zbulesës, që në fakt është e krya. And so what we began to do is we wanted to see what the Lord wanted us to see, that God would do through us what he says he's going to ultimately do in the book of Revelation. So John looks back and he sees us and he sees all the people that were saved from every tribe and nation and tongue and people. So we just decided that we want to be a part of this great commission. We want to be a part of this great vision that God has for his people. So we have decided that in the five coming years, we would like to be able to support seven foreign missionaries. And so, And so, believing God, we're taking our first steps, and we want to be able to support, and so we've already taken on three missionaries. And so, for me, there's no greater joy as the pastor of the Duras Bible Church than to see, through walking through this vision, God is blessing us. I can't wait till the day comes when the Lord ultimately calls us all home and, and we from the Duras Bible Church can meet other people that, that we've invested in to see their souls saved in heaven as a result of our investment. So all of this produces a tremendous joy and, and, a, and, a, and a praise and a worship of God. So this does not come from our own strength. It's from the Lord. Everything comes from Him. And He deserves all the glory for it. Okay. That's it. Okay. Let's give Him a hand. Thank you. Do I should Um Let's go ahead and just stand up and just take two or three minutes and let's just stretch our legs, greet the people around you, and then we'll come back with a message. Okay, let's do that.
All right, let's go ahead and find our places. And we are going to get into the Word of God. So let's kind of get ready and uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Zanin, watch this. Okay. Dorshekui, që kanë kaluar shumë njërët përëndis kanë qënë nuk të botë. There's many centuries, of course, that uh, the people of God have lived in this world. They're born, they grew, they lived in the generations in which they lived. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 36, it speaks of David where it says, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God. So just as David lived during his generation, every other person lived during their own generation, of course, we live during our generation. As we've seen so many other people in history have made a difference in their generation, what we need to do is strive to make a difference in our generation. We need to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit and, and, and in the light that the, that the Word of God gives us. In 1930, the Albanian Football Federation was formed. Uh, all those years, the Albanian team never achieved the ability to compete in either the World Championship or even the European Championship. Seven years ago, there was an Italian trainer that took over the, the coaching duties of the Albanian squad. The very first day of the training, he presented uh, to the players a letter. And so he presented it to the players and, and he said this. If you want to go further in your life or to win a, a game, it's not just an issue of tactics. It's not even an issue of strength. Even though both those things are necessary. To win, it's actually an issue of your heart. If you boys want to make a difference in your generation, you need to go on that field with this idea and with this heart that you're going to make a difference. But if you want to be remembered just as good guys, just keep doing the same things you've been doing. What happened was is that those guys decided they wanted to make a difference. They worked together. They, they fought with one heart. They wanted to make a difference. And they finally sent the Albanian squad into the championship. All because they decided that they were going to have a heart to make a difference in their generation. It doesn't, it doesn't work any differently with Christians. They, they know God. They, they know God. They have a relationship with Him. They know that He's worthy to be praised. And, and they want to make God real and available to the people that are around them. And the Bible teaches us a lot about life through the illustration of sports. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, it talks about running in a race. In verse number 24, it says, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 11, it refers to it this way, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. 
When these guys came back from the championship, they were received with a parade, a national welcome. And their names were written in a plaque that was posted on the brand new football stadium in the capital city. And they did all this for some glory that's going to fade away. But the thing that we can do is that we can make God known in our generation, make a difference in our generation, which is for a glory that lasts forever. And this is the thing that I want us to see today. To make a difference in our generation. There's three things that I want to share with you, and those are our three points about the right time, the right purpose, and having the right vision. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3 and in verse number 11 that God has made everything beautiful in His time. And everything in God's timing is, is beautiful and everything in God's timing is perfect. God is never early, God is never late, God is always on time. The Bible talks about Isaac, and when he talks about Isaac, it mentions that Isaac was born at the appointed time. The Bible also tells us that when God sent his only son, he sent his only son at the appointed time. There's things that God shows us in Acts chapter number 7 also. Stefanin from Zimne Frumus Shaint Thotek Veprat Stat Statum Diet. So Stephen, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tells us in Acts chapter 7 and verse number 17, But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. So when the time of the promise drew nigh, the people multiplied. So it's talking about a time that is still coming so the promise that he's talking about under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is the promise that God made to Abraham. That God was going to take care of the generations after Abraham. What happened is Israel went and they traveled and they ultimately ended up in Egypt, we know. And there's an entirely different thing going on in, in the promised land of Canaan. There was things going on in Egypt in the world and there was things going on in Canaan at the same time. And all these things, God is still in control. He's in control of what's going on in Egypt. He's in control of what's going on in Canaan at the same time. And and while these things were being developed, the things that we see a few verses down in Acts 7 and verse 20 happen. It says in verse 20, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. The Bible says that at that time Moses was born. What we see is there's nothing random that happens in the plan of God. And just as Moses was born just at the right time, you and I were also born just at the right time according to God's plan. All of the Christians have lived their time at the right time in their generation. David lived in his, his life during his generation. You and I all live our lives that God has given to us in our time, in our generation. So just as things were going on separately in Egypt and in Canaan and God was overseeing all of these things, He also was working them that they would ultimately affect one another. This doesn't happen just with Moses. Because the God of Moses is our God. The, the God who is in history is the God who's continuing history. The one that brought Moses in the proper time is the one that has brought us at this time. What happened in 
in 1992 was the time that communism fell. For 45 years leading up to that time, the people that were under communism were in darkness. And what you need to know is that God knew exactly when communism was going to fall. Not only that he knew that it was going to happen, but God works in such a way that nobody would be lost, that he would reach all people. And so when as soon as communism fell, we found that the people in Albania were actually very open to the gospel. And so while things were being developed in the situation in Albania, things were also being developed in other places outside of Albania. God was working in the lives of people in their generation outside of Albania so that they would be prepared to be able to come into Albania and win Albanians to Christ. A lot of missionaries came from Europe and from the United States and came in and were able to win a lot of Albanians and begin to start churches so that God could be praised. What I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, is that we have been born in this generation from God with a purpose. We don't just have to know that God has a purpose in the things that he's doing in this de- generation, but we have to be convinced of the fact that God wants to use us for a purpose in this generation. Uh-huh. Uh, I've been saved in uh, 1995. I had no idea where God would ultimately send me. But when I was saved, I was a part of a church that God had planted in Tirana, the Tirana Bible Baptist Church. I had no idea that there was going to be people saved in Duras and that there was going to be a church in Duras. But what God always does is He's always working in multiple places at the same time. There was a generation of people that were growing in their faith in the Tirana Bible Baptist Church. At the same time, God was working in the hearts of many of the people in Duras before he ever called us to go to Duras, and he was beginning to work in their hearts so that they would be prepared to be able to hear the gospel. We're here because we want to talk about missions. The one thing that we need to have clear in our minds and in our hearts is that God has put us here with a specific time and a specific purpose to make a difference in our generation. The, the generation that's here right now is the generation that God is going to use for great things in other places. I've never been to the country of Hungary. I don't know how many people are saved or how many people need to be saved, but I know one thing. I know God's working in that country at the same time that he's working to prepare people here to go there. I can see that God is working in a generation of people here at First Baptist Church. And what we can see with the eyes of faith is while Kale is getting ready to go there, God is also preparing the hearts of many people there so that when he gets there, they're ready. But this is not just an idea that we have in our mind. This is a, a conviction that we have in our mind and our hearts that God's actually going to do this. So while the missionary is the one who actually moves his physical address, I'm actually going to be going with him. And 
é planeta perna disso. Because I'm going to be working together with them, and it's not just an issue of somebody moving their address, and it's not just an issue of us even writing a check. It's an issue that I'm going to be a participant in the Great Commission and what He's doing over there. Pikarist per këtë ko jemi këtu ku jemi. Specifically for this time, this is why I'm here. Kanë një parim të Esteri 4, 4, 4, 4, There's a principle that we see in Esther chapter 4 and verse number 14, that famous statement where it says, And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Esteri e kuptoj këtë gjë. Esther understood that fact. Ajo kuptoj që për një kote t'il ishte aty ku ishte. She understood that she was at the right place at the right time. Ajo mori një vendim në jetë. She made a decision in her life. Dhe ishte të bënë në e saj. And the decision was that she was going to make a difference in ajo, her generation. Të mos një tonë dhe për vetën e vet. She decided that she was not going to live just for herself. Ajo tre dit, tre net në she went three days and three nights fasting. Ajo e që po të të mbreti, e të dekja. She knew that if she went before the king, that it was possible that she could be, she could be put to death. Por ajo But she decided that she would go before the king. And God used her mightily. God has the same thing with you and God has the same idea for me. He will use us mightily if we just decide that we are here in the right time and we want to make a difference. For such a time as this, we are here. The way that God works is that He goes ahead of us and He prepares the place, He prepares the way. And then He sends the people there. This is how the Lord works. It's not like the missionaries send God somewhere where He hasn't been. It's God that sends the missionary to the place where He desires for them to be. Në dhjatën e eren, Biblia na tregon që duke e ditu kohën ku jemi. The Bible says in, in the New Testament that knowing the time in which we live. In Romans chapter 13, specifically in verse number 11, it says in that knowing the time, that now it's high time to awake out of sleep. Te ke parë korinas dhe gjithashtu, po na tregon që koha është kurtua. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 29 that the time is short. Edhe tek Efesianët 5, Biblia në tërgonë që të zgjohemi. And in Ephesians 5, in verse 14, it says that it's time for us to wake up. Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light. Në, në gjithë këtë është, duhet kuptojmë që ne jemi pikrish në këtë ko, edhe të qohemi dhe të pëjmë dërshimi. The whole thing is just to help us to understand that we are here at the right time and that we need to get up and we need to get busy. Kjo është gjë e parë. That's the first thing. E dyta është uh, mund të dish So it's it's great if you know the time and you and you understand that, that you're in your generation, but just knowing that certainly is not enough. Ne duhet të me We have to live our lives with purpose. Dhe e duhura, janë e të përjetshme, dhe jo që janë të përkoshme, që janë në në të djallit. And so the, the right purposes that we need to have are going to be eternal purposes, not temporary purposes under the sun. Të kesh qëllim në jetë, do të thotë, të kesh mision. To have a purpose in your life is the same thing as saying to have a mission. Sepse ky është misioni, të jetosh me qëllim. This is the mission, to live on purpose. Të Mateu 20, në epet një shëmbëllëtyrë dhe në vargun 6, le zëmë diqka të veçant. In Matthew chapter 20, it gives us an illustration, and in verse number 6, it says this. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? Konteksi, ku jemi këtu është në bretërnje qeve. The, the context that we have here is with the kingdom of heaven. Dhe nuk aplikohet për ne, po ka një parim të rëndësishëm që mund të mësojnë. And even though the doctrinal application does not really have to do with the church, it does have a principle of life that we can apply. I zoti shpiz vëre disa njerëz që janë duke mos brazio. The, the Lord of the house, he notices that there are some people who are standing idle. They're not doing anything. And he, and he makes them a question. He says, why stand ye here all the day idle? You know what this means? Why are you standing here without purpose? A, a Christian without a mission or a church without a mission is as though it's dead. 
nuk mundet të hymë begatisht në mbretërin e Zotit ton, në qofë se ne nuk kemi qëlim një jetë. We cannot enter abundantly into the eternal kingdom of our God and Father if we don't have purpose in life. We're not talking about temporary purposes. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, this is going to take a second. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8 that I don't have in front of me. He's going to quote it. I'm going to tell you what it says. I do to it. Oh, for the for the Vargas. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, so what he wants to say is this. What he wants to say is that the word that is translated as idol in 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8, it's translated the same word as being barren or unfruitful. I ajo që po shohi më është njerëzit pa qëllim, janë njerëzit që janë të pafrytshëm. What he's trying to say is that people who are without purpose are people who are without fruit. Dhe njerëzit që janë pafrytshëm më poshtë na tregon që nuk mund të hynë begatisht në mbretërinë e Zotit tonë. And people that are without fruit are the ones that we read about a few verses down from that that we read already are the ones that will not enter into the kingdom abundantly. Nuk po flasim për për sigurinë e shtimit. We're not talking about eternal security. Po flasim për hyrjen për para perëndisë. We're talking about the way that we enter in before the Lord. Edhe të jetoshme qëllim na bën të mundur që të më hynë të hymë për para perëndisë. Ashtu si Zotit thotë në në mënyrë të begat. And to live our life on purpose gives us the opportunity to be able to have that kind of a grand abundant entrance before the Lord. Çfarë do të thotë kjo, të kem qëllim nga nga jeta praktike. What does that exactly mean to have a purpose if we're looking at the practical side of it? It's simply the mission that the Lord Jesus Christ has left us. And so the Bible tells us that we need to go the great commission to go and make disciples of all the peoples. Por qëllimi im realisht është që të kujdesem për brezin pasardhës në mënyrë që ai të njohë Zotin. But specifically, my purpose in life is to make sure that I secure the next generation after me to be able to continue God's mission. Uh, Judges chapter 2 and verse number 10 tells us about something that happened in Israel. Where it says, And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. The generation that comes after us has to also know the Lord. If we're going to talk about purpose in life, this is the purpose that we should have for our lives. Uh, two, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 2 says we need to actually go more generations than just that. It actually sends it to the second and the third and the fourth generation. The question that we need to ask ourselves, is there going to be somebody who's going to live this kind of a life after I'm gone? And if there is, then I've lived my life on purpose. This applies on a, on, a, on a personal local level. It also applies on a global level. The reason that we send missionaries, the reason people go as missionaries, the reason why we desire for people to do this kind of a thing is for this very reason. So other generations and, and the peoples and the tribes and the nations and the tongues will all know the Lord. This is to live on a mission, or this is to live on purpose. So we have to be careful that the next generation will know the Lord. We have to be involved in discipleship, and we have to be a part of supporting missions. I want to make a difference in my generation. I've been born at the right time. God has a plan with me, and I want to make a difference in this generation. And this is the same thing that we all should want. I have the right purpose. Because the purpose that I have is the purpose that God wants me to have. 
në mënyrë që brezë vitë jetër të njohë Zotin. So that the next generation will know him. Edhe kështu të vazhdoj brezë pas brezë. And to continue generation after generation. E treta është vizioni dorë. The third thing that we'll see is the right vision. Ndërkohë që misioni ka të bëjmë me faktin që unë kam një qëllim një jetë, misioni më falën. Ndërkohë që misioni ka të bëjmë me faktin që unë kam një qëllim një jetë, vizioni ka të bëjmë me atë që unë kam një ëndër në jetë. So if a mission is that I have the right purpose in life, the vision would be to have the right dream in life. Nuk po flasë për ëndërën që shohim kër flem, po po flasë për atë që farë dëshërojmë dhe atë se ku du të dëshërojmë që të shkojmë. I'm not talking about the kind of dream you have when you go to sleep. I'm talking about the kind of dream that you have and the idea of where can we potentially go. Misioni ka të bëjmë me të tashme, vizioni ka të bëjmë me të ardhme, por të dyja në të lidura bashkë. The mission has to do with the present time and the vision has to do with the future time, but they actually both work together. Në një mjenën që në e të dyshin kur komunizmi ra, shumë shqiptar u largua nga Shqipëria. In 1992, when communism fell, a lot of the Albanians left the country of Albania. Unë isha nëndë me të vjeqë edhe ndërata që u larguan, isha dhe unë. I was 19 years old at that time, and among all the people that left the country, I was one of them. Isha i pashpëtuar edhe shkova në Greqi emigrant. I wasn't saved at that time, and I left to go to Greece as an immigrant. Kishim një udhë rëfyës që na udhë hishtë të mund të jetësim në këmbë, duke kaluar Lugina, Kodra edhe Lumejnë. We were following a guide who was, who was leading us on foot through the different valleys and hills and terrain of Albania. Wow, wow. Okay. So he said the distance that we traveled on foot, he measured it, would be about the distance as if we were walking from New Philadelphia to Indianapolis. Rrug e gjatë, rrug e shumë e vështirë, në është da shumë e ditë të tëra të e thimë. It's a long way, it was really hard, and we really had no idea how long it would take us to get there. U të rëfysi yun, më falë, Greqia nga kushku am neve ishte një vënd malor. And Greece, where we were going to, actually the terrain, it was mountainous. Edhe u të rëfysi yun, ndërko që ishim ne në një maj të lartë, të është e shikoni atë maj në malit atje, atje do shkaj. So the guide who was telling us the way to go, when we'd get up to a high point, he would show us a, a mountain off in the distance, and he'd say, you see that mountain out in the distance? He said, that's where we're going. And so when we'd finally make it up to that mountain, we'd get to that mountain, and then we'd, he'd show us, you see that next mountain over there? He said, that's the one we're going to next. Por duhet të kaloj e poshtë në Lugina, duhet të kaloj e Lumejnë, duhet të 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 shumë dhe risa të arrije në atë malë. So we saw the mountain in the distance, but we had to go down and we had to go through the valleys and we had to cross rivers and there was a lot we had to go through to finally make it to that next mountain. Këtu brënda është misioni dhe vizioni. So inside of this is also the vision and also the mission. Misioni është hapat e përdiqme, hapat e vazhdushme që hedhë dhe risa të arrije të ajo që të synonë. The mission is your daily steps, every step that you take one after another to eventually get to where you're going. It's impossible to make it to the vision if you don't take the daily steps to get there. In other words, without a mission, you'll never reach your vision. But vision is also very important. Një ditë kështë e rënë, në dërë ato ditë që ullëtuam, një ditë ishim në maj mali edhe ishte shumë mëre edhe shumë jegullë. One day, we made it up near the top of one of the mountains, and it came to where there was clouds and a lot of fog. And we continued to walk, but because we didn't have the vision in the distance, it turned out that we were just walking all the way around that mountain for 24 hours. Because there was a lot of clouds, and we couldn't really see very far. And can you imagine when we finally got back to where we started, we were really tired. <laughs> we did the right thing. We took step after step after step, but after a day's journey, we found ourselves back to where we started. If you don't have a vision, you can't actually progress forward. So it's important for me that I understand the time that I live and I must have a purpose, but I have to have a vision. In Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18, the Lord gives us the importance of having a vision. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Misioni është... Zotë Jezu Krish, ku erdi në tokë, a erdi me mision dhe erdi me vizion. 
So the Lord Jesus Christ, when he came to the earth, he came to the earth with a vision and a mission. In Isaiah 53, in verse number 11, it talks about what his vision and mission is. It says, He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. In that one verse, you see both the mission and the vision. The, the mission. His mission was that he would give his life for us sinners. The vision was is that ultimately there would be many people who would be saved. We see the, basically the same thing in Hebrews chapter 12. It says because the Lord looked forward uh, um, for the joy that was set before him. I do And for the joy of the people that would be saved, he endured the cross. So our God himself shows us that the way we need to live is we need to walk, but we need to walk with a vision. We need to have both a global vision, but we also need to have a local vision. The thing that God's been working in our church in Duras in the last three months specifically is that we need to have a global vision. And we go to the book of Revelation and we see what John saw with the eyes of faith. And John saw people saved out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And while we were busy working hard to win the people of Duras and to save souls of people that lived among us, God caused us to stand and look a little farther on the horizon for other peoples as well. So this is the thing that God's put on our heart, that we would, in the next five years that come, Lord willing, we want to be able to partner with seven different missionaries around the world. So we've only been doing this for two months, but we believe that God's going to help us and that we're going to be able to fulfill this vision. And the thing that's really exciting is that the whole church has really taken it to heart and in the last two months the mission's offerings have doubled. Why? Because we want to go to that place that God has shown to us. To be participants in the winning of souls that are out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. It, it doesn't have anything to do with money. It has to do with having a purpose and to go to that place that God has called us to go. And that's the same thing we see that God is doing with Kale. He's sending us forward with a vision. And this is wonderful. When, when, sure, it's great to look far off, and that's very important as we just emphasized, but we also need to not forget that we need to consider the, the area in which we live. There's a global vision that causes us to look far away, but there's a local vision as well. Before I continue, I want to ask a question. Have you ever thought about looking forward into the future just for your family? If the answer would be yes, let me ask you, how far into the future have you thought about your family? Basic 
when I think about my family, I, I think about my kids, and, you know, I think about them finishing university level, and, well, maybe that's about as far as I've thought about. Disa shojnë më largë, edhe shojnë edhe për njëpër dhe mbesa. Whereas some think a little further down the road, and, and they're envisioning that day when they can have grandsons and granddaughters. Po flasë për vizionin e familjes. But I'm just talking about a family vision that you would have. Ka diçka të mërkulloshme që gjejmë tek në jetën e Davidit. There's something wonderful that we see in the life of David. Biblia thotë tek 2 Samueli 7, vargu 16, që përëndia do të ndërton të ati, do më thënë Davidit një shtëpit të qëndrueshme. There's a wonderful thing that we see in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and verse 16 that, that there's, he's going to build a house for it says in thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee thy throne shall be established forever God's building David a house that's going to last. Po ashtu Zoti e përforcon të te para kronikave 17 vargu 10. And similarly God emphasizes this again in 1 Chronicles 17 and verse 10 where it says furthermore I tell thee that the Lord will build thee a house. O mendoj që Zoti i mori një dulbi edhe i dha Davidit një dulbi që të shikonte shumë lartë për sa i përket uh, uh, pasarësve të ti. It's as though the Lord gave David a pair of binoculars and so that he could see much, much further down where his house was ultimately going to go. Edhe Davidi pa bekimin e familjes të ti brez pas brez pas brezi. And David was able to see the blessings of his family generation after generation after generation. Ky është vizion this is a very distant vision that he had. I would like to have that. I think we would all like to have that. But there's a secret. We have to see the secret is what was going on inside of David's heart. And that's in 2 Samuel chapter 7 and the first two verses where it says, And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest about from all his enemies, that the king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. David had in his heart something special. He knew God. He knew that God had no need for anything. Although when he would see that the presence of God was represented by an ark of God dwelling edhe, within edhe curtains, and he himself was living in a kingly pa- palace, he desired to build a better house for God. And he spoke to the prophet Nathan, and God returned his answer. I'm going to build you a house. And it all came because of what was truly inside David's heart that David wanted to build a house for God. In the Psalms it tells us that unless the Lord builds the house, we that labor, labor in vain. There's nothing greater that we could do that, that if we would help and God has a, has, a, has a far deep vision for all of us and our families. I know we're in the Old Testament. And we are living in the time of the New Testament. But still there's a great principle that we can learn from the life of David. Because we learn from 1 Timothy chapter 3 that the house of God is the church of God. And the Bible tells us in 1 Peter that, that the house of God is built with living or lively stones. And if I make the decision in my heart that I want to build a house for the Lord, and let me just make it clear right now that building God a house is not something that we do in our own strength. It's the, it's the work that God does in and through me. But if I in my heart want to be a part of building God a house, I want to gather together living stones so that a house for God can be built. 
Në qofë se të gjithë ne që jemi këtu, do të jemi me këtë vizion, që duham të ndirtojmë Zotin një shtëpi, atër do të shpërndahemi në një Filadelfia për të kërkuar gurë të gjallë, do më thëmë për të ndarë në gjillin, në mënyrë që shpirë të atë vitohen, gurë të gjallë të vinë, shtëpia të ndërtojt, kisha të ndërtojt. If all of us will have this vision, that we want to build God this kind of a living house, then all of us will go out, all through our towns in New Philadelphia and Tuscarawas County, that we will gather living stones, and we will gather them together, and build them out to build a glorious house for the Lord. E dhe Biblia të regonë që përën dhe anderojnë ata, që anderojnë ata. And the Bible tells us that God honors the people who will have that desire. E ndërko që ne kujdesim e për përën din, ajo që ndohë të është përën dhe a kujdesit për nërë. And at the time while we're taking care and worrying about God's problems, He's going to take care and worry about ours. E ta bëj pak më praktika këta. This is a practical application. Si të je mu me vizion në jetën praktike në një Filadelfia? How can I be a man with vision practically speaking in New Philadelphia? Le të filloj me një hap të vogël, unë dëshiroj që brënda një jave duke ju lutë o përëndis, duke ju kërkua përëndis që të më hap një derë të flasë me një njëri për krishti. I'm going to believe God that if he would work in my heart, that in the span of one week's time, that he would allow me to share the gospel with just one person in one week. Ky nuk është vizion, është vetëm pak. This isn't a great vision, this is just a small thing. Bërë nga një muaj, unë kam vizion që të flasë me katër njerës, pra nga një që shdoj avë. And so if I carry this out at the end of one month, I'll have a vision to be able to share the gospel with four people in the span of a month. Bërë nga një viti, unë kam si vizion të flasë me 28 njerës. And so at the end of a year, I've got the vision to speak to 48 people sepse duat i ndërtoj Zotin një shtëpi. Because I want to build a house for the Lord. Edhe show me vizion. And I'm looking with vision. Edhe ajo që ndothër që bërna tre vjede, unë daj, unë flasë me në 124 veta. And if I do this in the span of... 124, bërna tre vjede. If I do this in the span of... 124, bërna tre vjede. In three years... 124. Okay, 148 people. Is that people to talk to? Le të themi që jemi 500 njerës edhe duat të mbajmë këtë vizion të gjithë So let's take that math, if we can do it right, and say there's 500 of us that are going to actually have this vision in our lives. Within the span of one year's time, if 500 of us have that simple vision, we can have witness to 24,000 people. In three years, 72,000 people. Ne kemi shpërthyër Filadelfin, kemi dalë në kufin të i qytetetve tjera. So, we've already exploded past the boundaries of New Philadelphia and we're going into other cities by now. Right? Kjo është të jeshtë me vizion. This is to live with vision. Dhe ne duhet të kemi vizion. We need to have a vision. Sikur një nërë këta, sikur një katër ta këtyre të shpëtohet. Even if only one-fourth of those people we talk to actually get saved. Bërna tre vjetëve, këtu duhet të jenë 7.500 njerës. Within three years, we're going to have 7,500 people. Can we live according to vision? This is the question. We need to understand that we're in the right time and in the right generation. We have to live our life with a purpose, and the purpose is, is that we need to help replace in lost man that image of God. And we need to see far with vision. But it has to be something tangible for each and every one of us in our lives. I started this message with the story of the Albanian Football Federation. Ata djema o bëmbashk me një zemër, me një mendje, sepse do një të bënë ndryshimin. So that team worked together with one mind, with one heart, because they wanted to make a difference. Dhe ne në një Filadelfia du të bëhemi me një mendje, me një zemër për të bërë ndryshimin. And we here in New Philadelphia have to have that one mind and one heart so that we can make a difference. Edhe a që ndohë të shë begatisht, do të nëhapet hyrja, dhe begatisht do të hymë në mbretërin e Zotit Tonis. So that when our time is done, that we can have that abundant entrance in the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Në një koncert në Vienë, there was a concert in Vienna. A ishte një mjeshtër i mathë që i binde violinës. There was a great violinist, a master violinist. Edhe a i pati një performant të shkëllqyër në një mbrëmja. And he did a performance, it was an amazing performance one evening. 
pasim baroi të gjithë ata që ishin aty u quan edhe duart për këtë ngjat. After he finished everybody jumped to their feet and they clapped gave him a standing ovation for a long time. Po aty ishte edhe një njëri i pasur i cili kishte violinën më të mirë që ekziston dhe violina më e mirë e prodhuar. One of the people that was in the crowd that day was a very wealthy man. He happened to be the owner of the world's most rare and expensive violin. Dhe kur ai mbaroi ajo që ndodhi është ai i kërkoi ju lut mjeshtrit që të mund të ti binde edhe një pjesë me violinën e mirë. When when the when the performance was over he went and he had one request that this violin master would take his precious violin and and play one piece with that instrument. Të gjitha ta në sallë heshtin për shkak të tingullit të mrekullueshëm që nxirrt e violinë. Everybody that was in the hall were just drawn silent because of the sound and the tone that came out of that instrument. Ne jemi një vegël në duart e perëndisur. We are an instrument in the hands of our God. Ose jemi një vegël që nuk e lëm vetën në duart e perëndis. Or we're going to be an instrument that we don't allow ourselves to be in the hands of God. Por nuk kam mjeshtër më të madh dhe më të mrekulluar se sa perëndia që na merr edhe në qoftë se ne e lejojmë ai bën diçka të mirë. But there is no greater master that could take this instrument and use it for his glory than God. E ndërkohë që kuptojmë që ne jet, ne po jetojmë në kohën e dur and while we are understanding that we are living during the right time. E ndërkohë që ne kemi mision dhe qëll, do më thonë qëllim në jetë. And while we understand that we have to have a purpose in our life. E ndërkohë që ne duhet të shohim e vizion realisht të përditshëm të muaj për në muaj edhe në vit. And while we know that we need to live our life with a vision every day and every month and every year. Ne duhet të lejojmë vetën tonë në duart e perëndisë edhe ai do të bëjë gjërat më dhomë. We need to leave our lives in the hands of God and let him do great things. Let me go ahead and pray for us and we'll wrap it up. Heavenly Father, as we come before you now, I just want to ask that you would take this word and this challenge and burn it in our hearts, Lord. We, we've heard from you on how you are at work. And Lord, we sometimes find ourselves frustrating the grace of God by being disobedient. Oh Lord, I pray that we would all understand that our lives are not a mistake. We're not early, we're not late, we're not forgotten. We are here on time and with a purpose. And God, you've given us a vision. And the vision is written in your word and it's clear. And I pray that each of us would own it. I pray that each and every one of us, while we are lifting up our eyes and looking on the field in a missions conference, would not look over and beyond our neighbors. That if we would just have the vision to speak the gospel clearly to one person this week and four people this month and 48 people this year, Lord, the, the army of people that could be available to make a difference in our generation wherever you might send them is something I want to be a part of. And I pray that you would change us so that we would be a part of it. God, we're humbled by this. And I pray for anyone who's here tonight who's struggling with their understanding of timing, who's struggling with their understanding of purpose, who has been blinded by the God of this world, that they would just surrender their hearts, that they would get on their face, that they would confess whatever they need to confess. And they would beg you to change them today moving forward and live our lives with joy and with purpose forever. That pleases your heart, and that changes our life. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.